So it is now a big pleasure to uh, introduce uh, Peter Brahm. Every time I write to Peter Brahm, I say, uh, I'm saying uh, CEO, CFS. Uh, so this is not the case anymore. I have to get used to it. So now P uh, Peter's uh, new title is uh, VP Luster. Good morning, everybody. Um, I uh, thought that before I uh, would give you an overview of the activities of the, of the Luster Group and, and upcoming technology, I would um, follow up on what just was being said about uh, Linux and Sun and ARSC. Uh, tomorrow morning, I will be here too, and we will be announcing that there will be a Sun-supported Linux HPC software stack. And uh, we will start to work on that immediately, and uh, that should be coming out in 2008. So we will tell you more about that uh, tomorrow. So I, I just want to um, say to ARSC, we are aware of the problem, and we're going to do something about it. And so we'll come back to that tomorrow. Um, let me um, tell you a little bit about um, Luster. Uh, so Luster is one of Sun's file systems now. Uh, it's a scalable HPC file system. And you could describe it as a file system that aggregates many, many servers. And it does that to get um, more capacity than you can get from one storage server and more bandwidth. And that's a very simple way to describe it. So Luster is a file system that you want to use when you have very many clients um, or when you're looking for really extreme performance. And um, <coughs> it was originally developed by uh, a small company that I founded. Uh, it, it, the company existed for six years before being acquired by, uh, by Sun. And at CFS, Cluster File Systems, as they were called, we worked very closely, mostly with US government labs. So, you know, whereas it is, in a certain sense, our technology, I think it is better to refer to it as community technology that was developed um, in conjunction with the customers. The customers, in many cases, understood better what we needed to do than we did, I think. Uh, so where is Luster deployed? Um, I haven't seen the new top 500. I don't even know if it's there already. But on the previous one, we ran on 50% of the top 30 machines. So that tells you that it's for big systems, not necessarily for small systems, on 15% of the entire top 500. In 2007, we broke into a number of um, industrial areas with, with some good successes. Uh, there are now many oil companies that use Luster. Um, I think uh, six major oil companies like you know, the BP, Shells, Exxons, and so on um, use this for their geophysics stuff. Uh, movies, um, Harry Potter, Spider-Man. Next time you see it, please think of us. Yeah, it was made with Luster. Yeah. Um, um, <coughs> chip design with Luster is happening in multiple places. Synopsys is uh, perhaps the most premier customer we have. And uh, uh, various big industries, Sony, for example, use uh, a Luster-based uh, system for, uh, for chip design. Large ISPs is an area that we're just beginning to work with. There are multiple um, ISPs that um, would like to build vast archives, for example, of video files, and again, the large namespace is very, very useful. Yeah, it avoids a lot of hassle with moving file, files. So um, Luster releases that I, I think you should in outline be aware of is that uh, is, is the one four release, which as you heard is just in, is still in use at ARSC. Uh, I think that was released in, in uh, was it late 2005 or so, early 2005. In um, 2006, we um, made many updates to 1.4, and early in 2007, in this year, 1.6 came out. So the big difference between 1.4 and 1.6 is that 1.6 is very easy to use, and we were not known for that. Uh, so it's a, a big improvement, yet yeah, you can uh, set it up very easily, and there's very little confusion possible, I think. Later, um, uh, early next year, I should say, or in quarter two, uh, we will come out with version 1.8 of Luster, and uh, there will be some major contributions to that system, and uh, ZFS will be used as the backhand file system. 
So the file servers in Lustre, they use ordinary file systems. And uh, we will be begin to use ZFS from 1.8 forward. I will say more about that in a moment. The other thing is that there will be Solaris Lustre servers in 1.8. Uh, both the metadata server and the object storage server will be available for Linux and Solaris, maybe even for other platforms, but that's uh, probably not uh, in, in 1.8 already. Um, version 2.0 is um, a big um, release for us that will come out late next year and it will introduce clustered metadata servers for, for very high performance and um, server network striping, with which many of you have asked for. Uh, server network striping allows you to use completely commodity storage boxes without failover built in, uh, for example, thumper boxes, yeah, the 4500, and it builds the stripes in the network. So that will be a big feature in uh, version two. Um, I wish we had it already, but it is actually extremely difficult to build. And uh, uh, you can uh, pin me down in the corridor and hear more about that if you're interested. Let me spend a few minutes telling you about uh, the acquisition of our company because many people have asked, so what's happening with Luster now that it's part of Sun? Um, so the, the acquisition closed on October 1. And uh, it, it was very disruptive to some staff. Uh, I think most notably myself. And uh, very fortunately, it was not very disruptive to the engineering team. They have, uh, they, I think, uh, continue to work almost uh, uniformly before and after. I think the integration in Sun uh, has proceeded very, very well. And many of us feel that we've found an extremely happy home and it's a great company to work on. The theme of bringing cluster file systems to Sun is continuity. And continuity in every sense of the business of CFS. Um, open source will remain there. Um, I didn't put this on the slides, but Linux will remain the primary platform for Luster for probably a long time to come. Uh, we will support customers with the same model of um, very direct engagement between our engineers and the customers, which with big installations is often very, very helpful, yeah, that there is um, very rapid turnaround between the uh, the Luster group and the file system uh, as it is installed. Um, Sun has also continued the OEM business for Luster. This is extremely important because um, you know most Luster users are not necessarily Sun customers and we have a good opportunity now. We have a good customer and deployment base and it would be a, a terrible waste to alienate the OEMs. So Sun has made very careful arrangements that Luster with Cray and Luster with DDN and Luster with Dell will continue to be supported, yeah? And there will be no, um, the, it will be a level playing field. There will be one Luster for everybody. It's not that we are, uh, we will improve Luster, but for everybody, yeah, not just for some. Because if we alienate the OEMs, we lose this nice thing that Luster runs on everybody's hardware. Um, the Luster team, is largely structured the same. This primarily applies for the bulk of our people which are engineering. The engineering organization moved intact um, to Sun. We all went one job title down. That's the only real difference, yeah. Uh, and but you get used to that, yeah. Um, the, um, um, in, in the remaining slides, I'm just uh, mentioning a few um, of the technical things that we will be doing to just give you a feeling uh, for where we're heading. So ZFS and Luster, so Luster servers today use a cluster file systems version of the ext3 file system from, for, for Linux. Uh, we call that file system LDiskFS. Uh, L stands for Luster and DiskFS for disk file system. And in the past, we have really achieved extreme performance with it. But there are obstacles in the way that have led us to adopt ZFS. And the two obstacles were scalability of um, ext3 and ldiskfs and hardening. So with scalability, I mean things like the maximum capacity of the file system, the maximum number of files. And as you will see in some further slides, we have a need for extreme numbers, very, very large file systems and very many files. And so ZFS is a natural choice. Um, the servers that will be using ZFS will be running entirely in user space. So this is a, a big change. We're pulling the servers out of the kernel and put them in user space. That makes it much easier to deal with the Solaris port and maybe ports to other operating systems. Um, I can tell you we will be um, 
aggressive user space users. We will be like Oracle and basically say, we own this machine, get out of the way, just give us the block devices and we will control everything with the Lustre servers. So it will be um, uh, heavy-handed servers. These machines are probably not good to uh, read your email on when Lustre is running. Uh, uh, we'll, for example, use all the memory that's available and not give it back to anybody. Um, the um, important thing, so, so ZFS, the ZFS team, uh, I, I don't know if uh, many of you are familiar with this, but they have a transaction engine with objects in it and the striping and the hardening and the scalability. That, that subsystem is called the DMU. And the DMU was built by Sun to also run in user space. They did that for testing initially. They weren't really anticipating that we would jump on it and said, that's absolutely great. It's easy to port to Linux. Yeah, and uh, so we're using the DMU in user space. Uh, it's a perfect tool for, um, for Lustre uh, as a backhand. Of course, we need migration tools. We want to be able to bring people from the current file systems to um, new ZFS file systems so there will be online migration tools to go towards ZFS. And as a risk mitigation, by the way, you can also move backwards, yeah? Should we uh, eventually decide that there is still a good use case for the ext 3 servers, then that's possible. Scaling, so we're always after bigger computers. Um, Oak Ridge is a featured customer here. Uh, Oak Ridge is a uh, luster center of excellence. We have about five or six of these, and um, all of those have a particular mission. And uh, Oak Ridge's mission is to work on a very large machine, uh, maybe the first petaflop machine, maybe not. And uh, they have done with us this year a, a detailed study of I.O. scheduling in a cluster. And so I.O. scheduling on one server is a very well-studied topic, and it leads to things like elevators and good allocators in the file system and so on. But in a cluster, not so many people have looked at that. And uh, the outcome of the study is that we really decided, boy, we need a network request scheduler. Yeah? Currently, the Lustre servers, like all other file servers, just execute the requests sequentially as they are coming in. But by reordering the requests that we can collect in the network, we can do much better I.O. on the servers. So this is one of the enhancements that we will be uh, preparing for 1.8. And uh, you could call it a, a network disk elevator, yeah? So it can, uh, can turn a lot of I.O. in a cluster into very um, sequential disk I.O. Flash memory is a very hot topic, um, I think. <coughs> that uh, likely tomorrow Andy Bechtelsheim will tell you about some of the upcoming Sun products. Flash memory will be, I think, the first real discontinuity for I.O. subsystems. The bandwidth we can get from flash memory is just completely out of line with disk systems, and this is absolutely delightful. Yeah? Um, Good flash memory, so don't think of the USB stick, yeah? And don't think of the iPod. They are made in the worst way possible. If you really make good flash memory, it is extremely fast. It is as fast, can be almost as fast as RAM, is what I understand. And uh, so for the first time, there's almost unlimited bandwidth to storage devices, yeah? And we can really capitalize on that, and that's what we will definitely do. So. The characteristic of flash memory will be that it is much faster, but that for cost reasons, the capacity will be much, much lower. So the way we want to use this is build proxy <coughs> servers f that use flash so that compute clusters, which very often need to dump a large amount of data in a very short amount of time, yeah, the checkpointing process is, is, um, is typical for that. We will dump the data very fast to flash we're thinking speeds between three and 10 times what you would expect from a disk file system. Yeah? And by the way, the limiting factor will not be the flash, but it will be the InfiniBand network in your cluster. Then we drain this slowly to massive disk storage. We will offer a 100% coherent file image. The Next slide I want to say a few things about is um, the HPCS project. This is a very big DARPA project, um, and three companies had worked on this in the past, uh, Sun, Cray, and IBM. And uh, somewhat unexpectedly, Sun is now working on this again, because Luster will be the HPCS file system uh, for the Cray solution for, uh, for this project. Uh, this will lead to very high performance, and again, we will be bringing in some new features.